the feast of St. Simon and St. Jude is a joint feast. And it may be by a happy coincidence, but I suspect that the Holy Spirit is involved in this, that according to the vision given to Maria Valtorta, both Simon and Jude are accepted as apostles at the same time by Jesus and in the same place. So for the feast of these two apostles, and Jude is also known as Judas, and Simon is Simon the Zealot. For this feast, I shall read the relevant chapter from Maria Valtorta's poem of the man God, also known as the gospel as revealed to me. And it is chapter 56 of the first volume of the hardback edition of the poem of the man God from 1986. This vision was given to Maria Valtorta on the 28th of October, 1944. You are beautiful, O banks of the Jordan, as beautiful as you were in the times of Jesus. I admire you, and I'm enraptured by your solemn green-blue peace, resounding with flowing waters and leafy branches, as sweet as a melody. I'm on a road which is quite wide and also well maintained. It must be a highway, or more likely a military road built by the Romans to link the various regions with the capital. It runs near the river, but not precisely along it. It is in fact separated from it by woodland, the function of which I think is to consolidate the river banks and contain the water in times of flood. The woodland continues on the other side of the road so that the road looks like a natural tunnel over which the trees interlace their leafy branches, a beneficial protection for wayfarers in the hot climate of this country. At the point where I am, the river and consequently also the road form a wide bend so that the leafy embankment appears to me like a huge green barrier built to enclose a basin of calm waters. It almost looks like a lake in a luxury park. But the water is not as still as the water of a lake. It flows, although slowly. This is evident from its rustling against the first reed thickets, the more daring ones that have grown down there in the gravel bed, and also from the undulation of the long ribbon-like leaves of the canes, reaching down to the water by which they are sweetly lulled. Also, a group of willows with flexible falling branches have entrusted the ends of their green foliage to the river that combs the thin branches with a graceful caress, stretching them softly on the water's surface. There is peace and silence in the early morning. One can sense only the warbling of birds, the rustling of water and leaves, the glittering of dewdrops on the tall green grass between the trees, a grass not yet hardened or parched by the summer sunshine, but tender and fresh, since it came up after the springtime showers, which nourished the earth in its very depth with moisture and rich juices. Three wayfarers are standing on the road in the middle of the bend. They look up and down to the south, where Jerusalem is, and to the north, where Samaria lies. They look anxiously between the trees to see whether anyone is arriving as expected. They are Thomas, Judas Thaddeus, and the healed leper. They are speaking. Can you see anything? No, I can't. Neither can I. And yet this is the place. Are you sure? I'm sure, Simon. One of the six said to me when the master was going away amid the acclamations of the crowd after the miraculous healing of a crippled beggar who was healed at the fish gate. Quote, we are now going out of Jerusalem. Wait for us five miles between Jericho and Docco 
at the end of the bend of the river, along the road, in the woodland. End quote. This one. He also said, quote, We will be there in three days' time at dawn. Unquote. This is the third day, and we've been here before dawn. Will he come? Perhaps we should have followed him from Jerusalem. You were not yet allowed to mix with the crowd, Simon. Judas the Dea says, If my cousin told you to come here, he will certainly come. He always keeps his promise. All we can do is wait. Have you always been with him? Yes, always, says Jude. Since he came back to Nazareth, he was my good companion. We were always together. We're about the same age. I'm a little older. And I was the favourite of his father, who was my father's brother. Also, his mother was very fond of me. I grew up with her more than with my own mother. She was fond. Is she no longer fond of you now? Oh, says Judas the Deus, yes she is. But we have parted a little since he became a prophet. My relatives are not happy about it. Which relatives? My father, says Jude, and the two older brothers. The other one is undecided. And just to let you know, he's talking about Simon, the one that's undecided. And the ones that are not in agreement, the older brothers, they are James and Joseph. And all four of them are mentioned in the New Testament, in the Gospels. Judith the Deus continues. My father is very old and I did not have the courage to hurt him. But now, now, no longer so. Now I'm going where my heart and my mind tell me. I'm going to Jesus. I don't think that I'm offending the law by doing so. In any case, if what I want to do was not right, Jesus would tell me. I will do what he says. Is it right for a father to prevent a son from doing good? If I feel that my salvation is there, why prevent me from reaching it? Why at times are our fathers our enemies? I'll just pause there. As you heard St. Jude Thaddeus say, that his father is the brother of St. Joseph, as St. Jude says, and I was the favourite of his father, who was my father's brother. Obviously, the father of Jesus has been referred to there as St. Joseph. And the father of St. Jude Thaddeus is Alphaeus. And so Jude Thaddeus is Jesus' cousin because St. Joseph is the blood brother of Alphaeus, the father of Jude, and James and Simon and Joseph as well. So there's no blood relationship between those four um, sons of Alphaeus and Jesus. It's a legal relationship of cousin, because obviously St. Joseph was not the physical father of Jesus. So continuing. Simon sighs, as if he were overwhelmed by sad memories. He lowers his head but does not speak. And again, to interrupt, just in case I'm confusing you, because I mentioned a Simon already. I mentioned Simon, the brother of Jude Thaddeus, who's been speaking thus far. And when I mention Simon here, who's sighing, that's Simon the Zealot, who we're bound to hear, soon to hear more of. Thomas replies, I've already overcome the obstacle. My father listened to me, and he understood me. He blessed me, saying, Go, 
May this Passover be for you the liberation from the slavery of waiting. You are fortunate because you can believe. I will wait. But if it really is him, and you will find out following him, then come and say to your old father, Come, Israel has the expected one. You are luckier than I am, and we always lived beside him, says Jude. And we in the family do not believe. We say, that is, they say, he's gone mad. Again, just a pause. That may remind some of you of the incident which records in more than one gospel, where the family of Jesus and the Virgin Mary come down to get Jesus because they feel he's lost his mind. And that's when Jesus says, my mother and my brothers are the follow my followers, not my blood relatives. That's in response to the one who says, your mother and your brothers are outside. And Protestants often use this to say, well, look, how do we speak of the Virgin Mary in such exalted terms when she was coming down to retrieve Jesus because she thought he was mad like the rest of the family, let alone these other family members or her other sons, as well as other family members. Well, I've explained how they're not sons. They are called brothers, but they are cousins. But what's the Virgin Mary doing coming down to collect him because he's gone mad? Well, she's not. She, as a later episode in the poem of the man God reveals, but which should be kind of obvious from the Gospels themselves, Mary is going unwillingly with the family members. They're the ones who consider Jesus to be mad, as St. Jude today has said here. She's not considering him to be mad. And the reason why it's illogical for a Protestant even to think that is because they believe that the Gospels are actually the inspired word of God. Well, in those Gospels, she is told by the angel Gabriel the child she's going to have is going to be the Messiah. So how could she then turn around and think he's gone mad? It's absurd. She's been given a direct message from the angel Gabriel about who he is. So we must um, disregard that kind of feverish Protestant analysis of the situation and find in the poem of the man God corroboration for our Catholic position in relation to the Virgin Mary and corroboration for the gospel message that the family of Jesus and that in a broad sense the cousins the brother of Saint Joseph and his sons they are hostile to Jesus's mission that doesn't go on forever like that the two of them James and and Jude they become apostles James a bit later, Simon even later, and Joseph very, very close. Simon doesn't become an apostle. Uh, Simon, the son of Alphaeus, does not become an apostle. But he becomes a follower later on. And Joseph too, Joseph, the son of Alphaeus, that is, becomes a follower too. But that's very late. So continuing this narrative. There, there's a group of people, shouts Simon. It's him, it's him. I recognise his fair head. Oh, come, let us run. They start walking fast southwards. When they reach the centre of the bend, the trees cover the remainder of the road so that the two groups face each other unexpectedly. Jesus seems to be coming up from the river because he's among the trees on the bank. Master, Jesus, my Lord, the three cries of the disciple, the cousin and the cured leper are full of joy and veneration. Peace to you. There is the beautiful, unmistakable, full, resonant, calm, expressive, clear, virile, sweet, incisive voice. You too, Judas, my cousin, are here? They embrace each other. Judas is weeping. Why are you weeping? Oh Jesus, I want to stay with you. I've been waiting for you all the time. Why did you not come? Judas lowers his head 
and is silent. They did not let you. And now? Jesus, I, I cannot obey them. I want to obey only you. But I did not give you an order. No, you did not, says Jude. But it is your mission that gives it. It is he who sent you, who is speaking here in my heart and says to me, go to him. It is she who bore you, my sweet teacher, who with her gentle look, as mild as a dove's, says to me without uttering a word, be of Jesus. Can I ignore that heavenly voice that pierces my heart? Can I ignore the prayers of such a holy woman who implores me for my own good? Only because I'm your cousin on Joseph's side, am I not to acknowledge you for what you are? Whereas the Baptist recognised you, although he'd never seen you here on the banks of this river, and he greeted you as the Lamb of God. And I, should I not be capable of anything? Although I was brought up with you, and I was good because I followed you, and I became a son of the law through your mother, from whom I learned not the 613 precepts of the rabbis besides the scriptures and the prayers, but the essence of them all. Just pause there. We know that the um, rabbinic Jews of today, although they have a, a different religion from the Old Testament religion, it was that of Moses, still they retain some of that ancient faith. And we hear here hear of the 613 precepts and the prayers and there are other um, aspects of, of rabbinic Judaism which are referred to in the poem of the man God as well. But it's interesting to see that um, Saint Jude is saying that Mary taught him these things because we hear elsewhere she was the teacher of the young boys who were growing up along with Jesus in Nazareth in those early years. And your father, says Jesus, my father, he does not lack bread and assistance. And then you give me the example. You have thought of the welfare of the people rather than the little advantage of Mary, and she is alone. Tell me, Master, is it not right for a son to say to his father, without lacking respect, Father, I love you, but God is above you, and I will follow him. Judas, says Jesus, my cousin and my friend, I tell you, you have made good progress on the way to light. Come, it is lawful to speak thus to a father when it is God who calls. There is nothing above God. Also, the laws of relationship cease. That is, they are raised to a dignity because with our tears, we give our fathers and mothers a greater help and for something everlasting not for a short time in this world. We draw them with us to heaven and by sacrificing our affections to God. So Judas, stay here. I have been waiting for you and I am happy to have you, the friend of my life at Nazareth. Judas is touched. Jesus addresses Thomas you obeyed faithfully. That is the first virtue of a disciple. I came because I want to be faithful to you, says Thomas. And you will be, I tell you. And you, who are hiding shyly in the shade, come here, do not be afraid. My Lord, the ex-leper is at Jesus' feet. Stand up. 
your name, Simon, your family. My Lord, it was powerful. I was powerful too, but bitter sectarian hatred and errors of youth damaged its power. My father, oh, I must speak against him who caused me to shed so many earthly tears. You see, you saw the gift he gave me. Was he a leper? He was not, neither was I, but he suffered from another disease, which we in Israel associate with various forms of leprosy. He, his caste was then triumphant. He lived and died as a powerful man at home. I, if you'd not saved me, I would have died in the Valley of Sepulchres. Are you alone? says Jesus. Yes, I am. I have a faithful servant who looks after what property is left. I sent words to him. And your mother? She is dead. The man seems embarrassed. Jesus looks at him attentively. Simon, you asked me, what shall I do for you? Now I say to you, follow me. I will at once, my Lord, says Simon. But, but I, let me tell you one thing. I am, I was called zealot because of the caste and Canaanian because of my mother. See, I'm of dark complexion. In my veins, there is the blood of a slave woman. My father had no children from his wife and he had me from a slave. His wife was a good woman and she brought me up as her own son. She took care of me in my endless illnesses until she died. Jesus responds, there are no slaves or free men in the eyes of God. There is only one slavery in his eyes, sin, and I have come to abolish it. I am calling everybody because the kingdom is of all men. Are you a learned man? Yes, I am, says Simon. I also had my position amongst the important people as long as my disease was hidden under my clothes. But when it spread to my face, my enemies then could not believe they were at last able to confine me amongst the dead. Although a Roman doctor of Caesarea, when I consulted him, told me that mine was not real leprosy, but hereditary serpigo, which I would spread only by procreation. Is it possible for me not to curse my father? You must not curse him, says Jesus. He has caused you all sorts of trouble. Yes, he did, says Simon. He was a squanderer, a vicious, cruel, heartless man without any love. He deprived me of my health. He denied me love and peace. He branded me with a shameful name and with a disease which is a mark of infamy. He wanted everything for himself, even his son's future. He deprived me of everything also of the joy of being a father. That is why I say to you, follow me. As my follower, you will find father and children. Look up, Simon. There, the true father is smiling at you. Look at the wide world, at the continents, at the countries. There are children and children everywhere. 
children of the souls for the childless. They are waiting for you. And many like you are also waiting. There are no foundlings under my sign. There is no solitude, no difference in my sign. It is a sign of love and it gives love. Come, my childless Simon. Come, Judas, who are losing your father for my sake. I join you in the same destiny. They are both beside him. He's holding his hand on their shoulders as if he were taking possession of them and imposing a common yoke on them. He then says, and I unite you together, but now I will separate you. Simon, you will stay here with Thomas. You will prepare with him the way for my return. I will be back soon and I want the people to be waiting for me. Tell the sick people that he who can cure their illnesses is about to come here. You can certainly tell them that. Tell those who are waiting that the Messiah is among his people. Tell the sinners that he who forgives has come to give them strength to rise. Will we be able to do that? Yes, you will. All you have to say is, he has come. He calls you. He is waiting for you. He has come to grant you graces. Come here to see him. And to these words, add a report of what you know. And you, Judas, my cousin, Come with me and these, but you will stay at Nazareth. But why, Jesus? Because you must prepare my way in my fatherland. Do you think that it is a small mission? I can tell you that there's not a harder one. Jesus sighs. And will I succeed? You will and you will not says Jesus, but it will be sufficient to be justified. Justified of what and with whom? With God, with your fatherland, with your family. They will not be able to reproach us because we offered good things. And if the fatherland and the family will disdain our offer, we shall not be blamed for their loss. And what about us? You, Peter? You will go back to your fishing nets. Why? Because, says Jesus, I will teach you slowly and I will take you with me when I find that you are ready. But will we see you then? Certainly. I will often come to see you, or I will send for you when I'm at Capernaum. Now let us say goodbye, my friends, and let us go. I bless you who are staying here. May my peace be with you. And the vision ends.